Boker Tov. I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our news broadcast. And friends, there's so many things that are happening. I don't really even know where to begin. I am disturbed on a, on a number of issues right now. Uh, one is something that I saw this morning that the Lord was so kind to lead me to regarding Pope Francis' uh, uh, homily that he spoke at in Madison uh, Square Gardens in New York City there. He has once again fulfilled biblical prophecy that is laid out in the Bible. And, uh, and, and there's some other things that I need to examine there. Another thing that was very concerning to me was the interview that I had with Avi Lipkin. And I'm surprised at how many people did not even seem to recognize uh, his statements that are at the end of the video broadcast, and I'll be bringing that up a little bit later here in the news, uh, but he does speak about a, uh, the, the New World Government putting an end to ISIS. Uh, so we're going to be going into that as well. Kind of, I'm going to actually dovetail these together because they do work in unison, and, um, and you have to understand, I don't care who it is, uh, I'm not into the popularity contest. I, I appreciate the things that Avi had to say on many issues there, but when the comment about the new world government bringing an end to ISIS, I then realized as me and Brother Kellen have already been speaking about together on, on a number of issues there, they are going to fake, as I've said many times in the past, they're going to fake a millennium. They're going to fake a Muslim antichrist. They're going to fake many issues in order to, to bring about their doctrines that they're perpetrating to the world public there. They're even going to make sure you have a seven-year tribulation. At least they're going to try to do that one as well. But friends, uh, I, I'm even concerned, as Brother Kellen mentioned to me, and I never thought about this one before, but he said they're going to fake a rapture as well. Uh, I do believe that there will be a rapture, but it comes at the, after the witnesses, the two witnesses actually give their uh, ministry, then your rapture can come. Because frankly, friends, no one is really ready. They claim they are, but they're so tied up in all kinds of doctrines. When then is the true bride going to take hold of the skirt of a Jew of ten nations and say, show us your ways, we hear that God is with you? You see, it, it cannot happen as of yet, and this is my concern. People are, are believing that they're ready to go, but yet they're not ready to go. And I can tell you now, those that have prophesied the rapture will happen in 2015 or 2016, you're not going to see it then. You know, I have to tell you like it is. It is a scriptural fact. I have seen it. It's laid in the prophecies there. And Yeshua clearly brings it out that God will hide uh, his elect. But it clearly comes at the time when God pours out his judgment on the earth. And that will happen directly after the two witnesses have been killed in the streets of Jerusalem. Uh, now, let's go right into this, this very important news broadcast Pope Francis in Madison Square Garden, New York City, made a very startling comment here. And in his comment, I recognized immediately by God's grace that he was fulfilling biblical prophecy again as an antichristo, as an antichrist, as one that claims to be like Christ, but he doesn't have his act together. Okay, he says right here, uh, God said, uh, excuse me, God, said Pope Francis, is living in our cities. The church is living in our cities, and she wants to be like the yeast in the dough. She wants to relate to everyone, to stand at everyone's side as she proclaims the marvels of the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the eternal father, the prince of peace. Now this is his quote, end of quote there, but notice what he says. She wants to be, this is speaking of the church, to be like the yeast in the dough. My gosh, friends, I, I mean, many of you probably are catching it already as I'm speaking this to you here, but you should know immediately we are looking at Matthew chapter 16 from verses 6 through 11, where he says, take heed, be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. That is, the leaven is the yeast. Be aware of it. And now he's claiming that the church is the yeast in the dough. My God, that... You need to be aware of it then. You need to recognize what Satan is doing. And he's claiming that the church is that yeast. So what is the church then? 
that in his definition, there are the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and Yeshua told you to beware of it. You need to be aware of it. Of course, they didn't recognize what he meant by his statement there, and they reasoned among themselves, saying, Is it because we have taken no bread? Which when Jesus perceived, uh, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason you among yourselves because you have, uh, have brought, bought no, brought no bread? Do you not understand? Neither remember the five loaves and the five thousand and how many baskets you took up and neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets you took up. Notice he doesn't mention anything about fish here, does he? That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Maybe they forgot to put it in there. You know, remember, that was not in your original canon. No, sir, it was not. Even back then, they had to add it later, centuries later. Okay, so he says on here, uh, Verse 11, how is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then they understood uh, they, they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of the bread, but the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. You see what I'm talking about? And yet he, the Pope Francis says in his own statement there that that the church is living in our cities and she wants to be like yeast in the dough. She wants to be like the leaven in the dough. Oh my gosh, prophecy being fulfilled right before your eyes. Now, I want to show you something else that he does here that you won't find in your own canon because the Catholic Church doesn't want it there, that's for sure. And that is in the first part of the statement. He says, God is living in our cities. The church is, is living in our cities. You know, Pope Francis in his encyclical, because of supposedly uh, take care of the environment, that we should be moving to the cities. But here's what's interesting. It's totally contrary to what Yeshua taught in the humane gospel that he, that, that we, and by the way, the humane gospel, the gospel of the Holy Twelve, there are scholars. I'm talking about Dead Sea Scroll scholars, in fact, who actually will tell you that this is the only true gospel that you have because they say it's what we, we have a true fragment of this gospel. And the one that I'm speaking of is the gospel of the Holy Twelve. And that is another than uh, Lionel, I can't think of Lionel's last name there, but Lionel, who worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls, he was also the one that translated the Cyrus Cylinder that is in, the, in England there, clearly stated that the most accurate gospel there, there is is the gospel of the Holy Twelve. And he does believe that the gospel of the Holy Twelve is what was used to write the four gospels we have, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because they're almost identical, except he notices that they leave out important things. But let me read to you, and this is in chapter, uh, this is from the Humane Gospel. Uh, this is in chapter, I believe it is, let me look real quick, uh, chapter 82, and we're looking at verse 32. And Yeshua is quoted here as saying, And be ye as the innocent creatures of God, and seek ye the beauty of the countryside, and live not in crowded cities. Live not in crowded cities? He says, Where, wherein every evil deed worketh against the true nature of life. This is what he says. I mean, I am blown away by this. Uh, another one that he says here, he says, For ye are the sheep of God um, that seeketh the security of the fine shepherd. Be ye not mingled with wolves that scatter the flock and do injury to the innocent. Yea, flee the cities, and be you ever concealed from evil men among the forest and mountains of the land, wherein you shall dwell in safety and be not uh, afraid, nor ever be in want. Yeshua teaches you to get away from the cities, but what is the Pope of Rome doing in his encyclical and as well as in Madison Square Garden? He tells you to go into the cities. He says the church is there. He claims that Christ is there, and Christ is telling you he's not there. You know, now I'm not saying now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that, that God can't come down and bless and anoint someone that lives in those cities, but he knows, Yeshua knew that this was a dangerous place. This is why in his time as well, we see that many of the believers lived in the countryside. They didn't live in the cities. Yeshua always had to go to the wilderness 
John went to the wilderness. The true believers had to go to the wilderness. And I know many of you guys, you may be stuck living in cities, and, I, and, and my heart, I feel for you, I understand that. God understands that. It doesn't mean that you're not saved because you live in a city. I don't mean that. My point is, is what I'm trying to show you here is what the Pope of Rome is trying to do. He's trying to force the people to the cities, but there's an agenda behind it. It is not to save the environment. It's to take the lands from the people so that he can make sure they're doing it for greedy gain and filthy lucre's sake. This is why he wants you in a city. He wants all the lands for himself. Why do you think is what's happening in Syria happened in Syria? Do you think that the bombing of Syria by the United States, NATO and their allies, and now Russia and China and all these groups coming together into this one spot, this one region of the world, to, to cause this mass exodus of all the Syrian population to leave the country, you think it's just for no reason? My friends, they're doing it because if they get the people out of the land and they conquer the land, then they can now take and take the oil and the riches of the land for themselves. Pope Francis says to the people when he's at the, uh, I believe is at, I don't know if it's the United Nations or Congress when he spoke about it, he tells you to receive them. They're looking for a better way of life. No, they're running from war. You know, Avi Lipkin, he was very down on all, all Muslim people, all Arabic people, period. And he says they're the only goim. I don't agree with that. Anyone that's not Jewish is a goim. I mean, there's many Arabic people that, that Yeshua has to go to personally because nobody takes on the true gospel. So I don't think that all Arabs are bad or all Muslims are bad. They just need to know Yeshua. But I certainly don't believe in a one world religion as they had the other day. I watched a broadcast there. The Pope was standing there on the stage as, as another Catholic priest introduced him amongst all the different zines, J, uh, uh, Muslims, Hindus, uh, Buddhist priests, and everything else bringing about a one world religion. He calls for a one world religion, a one world government. This is what the Pope of Rome wants. At the same time, they displace all the people of the lands. Even in Ukraine, I begin to wonder if what the real purpose is is so that they can get all the natural resources that are in the land is why they're doing it. I'm getting to the point now, I don't trust any of the sides of the news because the news is not telling the truth on either side. And of course, they got all the Muslims in Europe. Now they got them all in America. And of course, they, no doubt, they'll try to genocide Avi Lipkin says, you don't have to worry about that. He says, the, the, uh, the new world government will take care of this. Let me play that clip for you. Listen to this just for a second. Uh, I don't think Islam is the great enemy. Islam will be defeated. It'll be defeated by the one world government. It has nothing to do with Jews or Christians. The one world government will defeat it because of the oil. Imagine that. The new world government will take care of ISIS and it has nothing to do with the Christians or the Jews. It's for the oil. Well, he's right. He's right about that. But the thing is, anybody that stands for a new world government, a new world order, is part of the Illuminati controlled system. My friends, like I said, you don't even look to any, the popularity, Rick Warren, all these guys that are all famous and everything speak at the United Nations. When you speak at the United Nations, you have inside connections. I know. I know. I know people. I know I was the special envoy to the United Nations that speaks there. Also know that I was told by the same person, keep my mouth shut about the Catholic Church. I'm causing too many problems. When you're speaking to the United Nations, you're part of the new world order. You're part of the new world system. My friends, you better wake up. You better recognize. I don't care how lovely the speech may sound. When that speech comes from the United Nations, they're part of the new world order, the new world system, the new world government. And every one of them has an evil agenda in this part here. And they're using Christian ministers and, and Jewish rabbis and, and speakers to be able to woo the people into believing a lie and be damned by that lie. They want you as part of this system. Let me share with you another thing. This is because I got into this, this issue here. It's very important that you see this as well. Um. 
And this here is in chapter 61. Again, the humane gospel. This is very much like Matthew 24. But, you know, I, I'm telling you, friends, those of you that are, that are against reading these books, remember, it, it, you have authenticated, you have fragments that are real of, this, of these works here of Yeshua. And if it wasn't for these works here, many of the pieces of the puzzles we couldn't put together. I need to read to you this, though, because it's very important. I'm going to read one part here, and then I'm going to back up. And in those days, he says, verse 3, chapter 61, In those days, the last before the great rest, those that have power shall gather to themselves in greed the lands of the riches of the earth for their own lusts, and, they, and thus shall oppress the greater number who have not. Why are they gathering the lands? They're gathering the land because they need the oil. They need the riches of it. Why do you think they displaced an entire country of Syria? You know, there was oil and natural gas discovered in Israel. Russia signed a contract with Abbas. Why was Russia never even challenged when he went in? You don't, you don't think the United States didn't know that Russia was already building a base and sending in tanks and everything when we reported this back, uh, what, a month or so ago? And everybody said, oh, you're lying. There are no Russians in, in Syria. You know, it took Russia to admit, you know, by the way, we have troops there. there you know, we're only uh, doing this or that. And then day by day, Russia brings in tanks. Russia has aircraft. Russia's building a base. Russia has an air base. And the United States never even challenges anything. But yet NATO had all these sanctions on Russia, punishing Russia for what was happening in Ukraine. It is nothing but a big smoke screen to the American people, to the world's population, to the European people, to the Jewish people. It is nothing but a smoke screen. And they say that uh, Netanyahu, they rush him over to Moscow because of what is Russia doing here. He knew Russia was there. I've got the very email myself almost a year ago where they knew they had made an alliance with Russia. And Russia would come in and Russia would deal with ISIS. Why are they dealing with, what, what, what was the purpose for ISIS to begin with? ISIS was in order to create chaos to give them a reason to bomb the entire country, to get all the Muslims out so that they can have the oil and the natural resources for themselves. Pope Francis is telling all of you to go move to cities, stay out of the country, because why? They want all the land for themselves. You'd be surprised what the government does. You know, my own family, a Jewish family, living uh, at the time, uh, many years ago in northwest Florida, a place called Pensacola, I had a bunch of family that lived there that actually owned acres and acres and acres of land, hundreds of acres. The military, back uh, before the Second World War, came in, declared the land unfit, unsafe, took everything from our family there, took it all from them, and then what did they do? They built a military air base there. They didn't get a single cent, wasn't paid for anything, just took it. Later it became a national park, and then later some very smart realtors that saw this uh, that were uncontested because they didn't make it public to where anybody could really tell, got the land for practically nothing and built houses on it. Stolen lands, just like they're doing to the Syrian people. You see, if there's oil in, in the Golan, where they're doing the testing, drilling now, natural gas in Gaza and, and, and West Bank and all these oil riches, then Syria also has a lot of oil. So what do they have to do? They have to disperse the people. Now, let me read to you the rest of uh, some more of this chapter 61. We'll, let's back up to verse 1. And another time while Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him in, a, in private and asked, Tell us, Lord, thou holy teacher of righteousness concerning the end of, of, of evil, what shall be the sign that we shall know of thy coming? Again, like Matthew 24. And Yeshua said unto them, Take warning that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ and the, and the truth. Uh, follow me and be saved. But great shall be the number of false prophets uh, will deceive. Yet many will take up the holy name in vain and misuse uh, the meaning thereof and cause great confusion among the people and mislead many. Now notice the many is not that there's many false prophets. It's many that are deceived because of the false prophets. Why? Because you guys are watching these people on TV. They're prophesying of all kinds of things. It, you know, I don't, I, I, I'm going to tell you straight up. I personally, and I'm not going to name names in this right now, but you got some people that's made a lot of prophecies, made millions of dollars off of books and stuff that have been written about these things, 
And I don't believe that not one of them is a true prophecy. I believe that these were things that were planned by the government, by the Illuminati, by the world's uh, people there. And they set these people up to make you think that they're prophets of God. And now they're even calling them the Elijah of this day. It's not the two witnesses. That's not how God does it. That's your false prophet that's only back in the Antichrist, the Roman Catholic Pope. Could there be another Pope? Yes, there still could be one more Pope. And there is a prophecy that I have noticed, and I forget which book that's in. I'll have to find that for you again so I can share that with you, that spoke about the King of the South that raises up and that will bankrupt the world's economy with his Roman soldiers. That's the Pope of Rome, and I believe that could be referring to Pope Francis. Now, the thing is, if that is Pope Francis in this particular prophecy, there's yet to come an Antichrist. But will, they, will the Pope of Rome and all these false prophets that are out there that are deceiving the masses, are they going to take and bring about an Islamic Antichrist? You better believe they will. And they're going to deceive the masses. They have to fake all these things. They're going to fake you a seven-year tribulation. They're going, to, they're going to line these things up with feast, and they're going to fake every bit of it to get you to believe that these things are of God and that they are truly the ones of God and this not of God. All right, so let's look at this. So he says, But great shall the number the false prophets will deceive. God, people. Yea, many will take up the holy name in vain and misuse the meaning thereof, cause great confusion among the people and mislead many. See, people are already trying to say Yahweh, Yehovah, Jehovah, whatever you want to say, and, and you're misleading the masses thinking that you know what his name means or how to use it. For many things shall take place upon the earth that had not taken place before, nay, nor seen by any generation except those of that generation. Very obvious, Yeshua was talking about our generation. For you shall hear of great wars, also much talk of war, and many will be threatened with destruction. But be you not troubled, for many things must come to pass, yet before the end of all evil things. We're seeing this already. And in those days, the last before the great rest, those that have power shall gather themselves in greed, the lands of riches of the earth, for their own lusts, and thus shall oppress the greater number who have not. That's a disbursement of the Syrian people. I don't care what religion they may have. I'm telling you. You saw, you saw Bible prophecy being fulfilled. They have taken, they have oppressed the greater number who have not. They're very poor people, and they have dispersed them into other parts of the world for another reason they're going to do it. You know, these people would have rather stayed in their own land. They didn't want to come to, to there. And I'm not talking about ISIS, but ISIS was only, ISIS is armed by the United States government in order to, to create all this havoc, to give the U.S. government NATO and their allies, which is nothing but controlled by the Vatican, a reason to displace all these people. For in those days the many shall be held in bondage, but yet not in prison, and they shall be used to increase the riches of the greedy. They're used to increase the riches of the greedy. They're held in bondage. That may very well be all these displaced Muslims and Arabs. Not all the Arabs that are displaced are Muslim, by the way. But they're displaced. They have them in camps and stuff throughout Europe and, and, and America as well. They're held in prisons. For the, because, so that they can fulfill their own lust to take the land in order to get the oil. That way they don't have to pay any royalties. You understand? For every cruelty and lust shall be worked against my innocent brothers and sisters of the great household of God. For many shall lust after the taste of flesh and blood shall flow, flow freely as high as the bridle of the horse. Let me tell you something. I know there's many of you guys that don't like the part when I talk about uh, animal, eating animals and stuff like that. And you say, well, everything is given to us. You know, God does have a permissive will. I'm not going to argue with you on that. You have a right to eat what you want. And that's fine. But I've, I've told you time and time again, God's perfect will was a vegetarian way, the fruits of the garden in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the time of Adam and Eve. And also for many years thereafter, it was always the vegetation that we ate. 
The animals were to eat the grass of the field. That was what God gave them. Now, though, the farmer gives the corn to the, to the cow, which is not what his diet is supposed to be. He's supposed to be eating grass, but they do that in order to fatten him up, to slaughter him. You know, and, and really think about it. Paul himself says that our body is the temple of God. And what have you done with the temple of God? You make it a graveyard. You know, if your dog died, your cat died, you would take and you would go out and you would bury him. When he dies, you don't cut him up and eat him. You bury him. Kind of like man. We came from dust of the earth and we returned to the dust of the earth. All right? The animals themselves, if you see an animal on the side of the road be hit by a car or something, when he first dies, he's his own size. In fact, if you weigh it like a fish, if you weigh a fish right after he's caught, once he dies, he loses weight. But when rigor mortis sets in, it bloats and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then an animal, a cat, dog, whatever it may be, uh, even a deer, will end up going about three, four times or twice its own body size from the rigor mortis that sets in. Decomposition of that carcass that sets in. And yet instead of doing, but, but yet take, take, let a watermelon fall off of a truck and fall on the side of the road. You'll never see it swell up twice its size. It's what God gave us to eat. When you eat that animal, you're basically making your own body its grave. You become the graveyard. Do you know that they say scientifically that the meat gets stuck in your bowels for decades? Causes high cholesterol, cancer, and everything else. I'll leave that alone. Anyway, in that time of trouble, no creature of God, nay man nor beast, shall escape the cruel judgment of that wicked generation, save mine holy elect, under the charge of mine holy angels. For I say unto you this day that a strange Savior shall rule the minds of many, and that generation shall believe, uh, excuse me, shall believe not in the evil of the world, but shall judge all evil good and all good evil. That's what you're doing with the Pope of Rome. And I'm not saying everybody that watches this video. I know many of you guys that watch, you know better. But for the sake of those that don't know, that watch for the first time, Fox News, the reporter called him Jesus and that we were blessed to have him in our midst. He is claimed to be the Savior. They called him the Prince of Peace. My God, wake up, people. I'm talking about this document is 2,000 years old. It's from an actual fragment of the Bible that, that you don't even have a fragment for the New Testament as far as from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It was taken from the Holy Twelve. This is where, the, this was where it was taken from. The Holy Twelve is almost identical. This here is the humane gospel right here. It's a, another writing. Okay, but we actually have the fragment of it. And he, simply, he prophesies and tells you, he says here, for I say unto you this day, that a strange Savior shall rule the minds of many, and that generation shall believe not in the evil of the world, but shall judge all evil good and all good evil. That's exactly what they're doing. They have made him their God. Let me read a little bit more and then we'll close here. For many shall be the miracles of the strange God work in the earth. He's already reportedly turned the blood, the dry blood into liquid blood. <sighs> he says that they shall worship that Savior with much devotion for all hope rests in the God that is not a God but deceives the people of every nation. And you've made him a God right there on television. But the eternal spirit of all shall send forth his holy messengers and they shall restore the holy law anew which wicked men have hidden by their vain traditions and those that believe not the holy law shall perish. The holy messengers, the two witnesses. And in that day shall all that that keepeth my law and commandments be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So who's really the ones that are going to be hated by all nations? The true Israel. It'll be mixed with true Jews as well because even Enoch prophesied that Israel would have its eyes opened. But they won't come open until the holy messengers come. It says, For many shall be offended of my holy laws and betray one another and shall hate one another. For many false prophets shall indeed arise and shall deceive many. And believe me, I am hated 
for the things that I've been saying. And I don't claim to be one of the witnesses at all. But I'm hated for it because God is already letting me see what's going to happen. Yeah, I tell you, in that age to come, the Father's name shall be blasphemed in a manner like never before in the history of the world, greater than even the star count of heaven itself. Revelation chapter 13, before your face. The beast that blasphemes God, blasphemes his saints, blasphemes everything. And they think it's a Muslim. Because why? They leave out the important part of the verse that Yeshua brings out next. For hands dripping with innocent blood of my creatures will take up my name in vain and mislead many. Because the one that blasphemes God names takes up the name of Yeshua or the name of Jesus. My God, friends. What does it say in Revelation 13? Verse 6 through 7, and he opened up his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Power is given unto him. They're going to give the Pope of Rome over all kindreds, tongues, and nations to make war with the saints. What saints? Not all the ones that join up. Not those like Rick Warren. Not even people. I mean, quite frankly, look what Avi Lipkin has just done. Now, Avi Lipkin is not, you know, I, I realize that he, he seems to recognize there's some problems with Rome, but he also, though, recognizes a new world government is going to stop ISIS. That's concerning to me. That is very concerning to me. Friends, Please, please open your eyes. Share this video everywhere you can. If you believe in this ministry that God has, has raised up to try to be a warning to the people, support it. You can go to israelreturns.com or israelinewslive.org and there's a donation place there. Stand with us. There's many things I'll be bringing out. Now that we're back here in Europe for just a short space, I'll be back in Israel here soon as well. I uh, need your help on that as well. I, I, I've really, I need to go back here in October, the first week in October, and but the problem is they, they up the flight tickets to almost $1,000. Normally I get it for only like $250 to $350, but they up that price there. And I just put it in the hands of God. If it's God's will, God will support it. If it's not, then I know it's God's will for me not to go. So that's the way I look at that. We love you guys. We thank God for you. I'm not condemning those of you that are watching. And listen, if you still eat meat, I'm not condemning you, my brother or sister. That's, that, God does have a permissive will. I'm trying to get you to recognize his perfect will. I'm trying to show you the message your two witnesses are going to preach. And I'm trying to get you to realize that the Antichrist is right before your eyes. It is the Pope of Rome. And there, the whole thing is, he is, he is not, he is. Remember how that's written in Revelation? That's because one pope dies, another one takes his place. So even if this pope, Pope Francis, were to be replaced, it's still your Antichrist. It doesn't change a thing. Now, I will say this. As my wife said the other day, the horse rider of Revelation chapter, I believe that's six, the white horse rider has already begun to ride. Pope Francis has gone out and he started his war. He has a bow, but he has no arrows. The one that does the war themselves clearly is going to be Russia, who rides the red horse, that will make the wars. Russia is called the Red Army, and of course China is allied with Russia, and China is also called the Red Army. Prophecy, friends, is being fulfilled before your eyes on a daily basis. Be in prayer. If you've ever been in prayer before, I beg you to be in prayer now. Seek God. Don't just because someone is popular, just because someone has made a million with books, they've prophesied some things right, some things not. And by the way, the economy, as far as the collapse of the economy, it's going to happen. They planned it to happen in order to bring about a new world order economy. You didn't need a prophecy for that. Not to mention the prophecy didn't happen, though, the way that it was claimed to have happened. But there were loopholes put in those prophecies as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of the news. Shalom and God bless you. Stand with us as we fight this battle.